Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church uh, for a, another crisp outdoor service. Um, uh, yeah, um, I want to invite you to, uh, if you have not already, please sanitize your hands and grab a bulletin off of this table. I also want to remind you uh, to keep those masks on, cover your nose and your mouth. This is no longer up to us. It is the state of Massachusetts. Um, so please be kind in doing that. And with that, I invite you to stand as you are able, uh, unless you are entirely too cozy, in which case, please stay seated. Um, and join me in the confession and forgiveness found on that front page of your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Beloved Christ hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, God has made us beloved children of life. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live as you were created, in freedom, joy, and love. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. God of captives and pilgrims, you brought your people Israel home from slavery and despair and gave them a land of freedom and plenty. Look with mercy on us also and deliver us from the prison of selfishness and bring us home to justice, life, freedom, and compassion. The reign that you promised to all the world in Jesus Christ, the Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Reading from Zephaniah, the first chapter. Be silent before the Lord God, 
For the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, he will do no harm. He will not do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, their houses laid waste. Though they build their houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter, the warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust, their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's, of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed, for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Thank you. God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is if a man, going on a journey, had summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them, to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability, and then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had received two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here is what you here, here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, that I gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For all those to the, all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. You'll be fine, the man said. You just need to develop a thicker skin. If you ask me what's the most common bad pastoral advice that I have received over the years, I and many of my friends, I would point directly to this thicker skin comment. Struggled hard with it for many years for two reasons. First, I do consider myself fairly tough already, and I am also human. I care when other people are upset, and though I can function just fine when that happens, I don't want to get to a place where my skin is so thick that I don't feel it. And second, well, the second reason I'll have to tell you about via a CrossFit story, if you'll indulge me, I allow myself about two of these per year. 
I, un I stood under the pull-up rig one day with my friend Ethan. Ethan is a coach who is particularly talented at gymnastics due largely to the fact that Ethan is tall, strong, and mostly just comprised of a set of shoulders. I remarked to Ethan about how my hands rip whenever I even think about gymnastics. Ripping is what CrossFitters call it when their hands bleed, and it happened every time I did pull-ups. I thought that Ethan was going to tell me that I just needed a thicker skin, like literally this time. He asked to see my hands. I showed him. He said, they're too calloused. You have to get rid of those. I didn't quite believe him. I've played softball my whole life, and my hands have always been really, really calloused. Calluses, that is to say thick skin, I had been led to believe would protect my hands from blistering. I told Ethan this. No, he said, you have to get rid of those. Thick skin rips off. You have to keep your hands smooth. And that, my friends, is when my perspective shifted, not only on gymnastics and literal thick skin, but on metaphorical thick skin, too. Thick skin causes you more pain in the end. Today's gospel lesson features three servants and a master who goes away and leaves them with his money. Two of them invest it, one buries it. When the master returns, he praises the ones who invested and berates the one who didn't, in a story that by itself seems kind of unjust. Isn't playing it safe? It's kind of like having a thick skin, like usually a pretty good plan, good life advice? For me, the key lies in the servant's answer. Master, I knew that you were a harsh man. It seems to me that each one of these servants got the master that they thought they had. It bears noting that we need to be sort of careful, assigning the master the direct role of God. Jesus didn't actually say that that's what we're supposed to think. And Jesus does usually tell us these kind of things in parables. So we should be careful about assigning these roles directly and assuming that this means that anyone is getting thrown into hell for not investing God's money or something like that. Don't go too literal on me. We're Lutherans. I believe that God is loving and gracious and full of mercy and love and that nothing that we think or believe is actually going to change that reality. But I have noticed that as a pastor, we do tend to create our own realities when it comes to God and how we live. Not in the next life, but in the here and the now. Who we think God is, what we think God is like, matters deeply. Those who assume that God is harsh and unforgiving often entrench that reality into their brains. For some of us, that reality was entrenched into our brains from a very early age. We were taught from the time that we were small that God is someone, someone that we should avoid making angry at all costs. And so we live our lives that way. We callous ourselves in self-protection. We develop a thick skin on our souls. And then we either write off religion entirely, or we live a kind of half-life where we participate in church so that God won't be mad at us. We choose self-protection, just in case. Of course, the most productive humans among us, whether in church or in life, do things not because we must do them, but because we get to do them. Funny, isn't it? How when you allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to believe in grace that you're able to do more? How when you're not just trying to buy your way out of hell, you're more motivated by God's love? How you do things not so that God will love you, but because God already does? That's Lutheranism in a nutshell, really. People died for that message. So we have two choices, really. We Christians, along with our Jewish and our Muslim neighbors, believe that we have each been given this one wild and precious life by our Creator. We can spend our lives assuming that God is harsh and trying not to mess it up, building calluses on our hearts to keep that harsh God from hurting us. But eventually, just like gymnastics has taught me, those calluses will rip off, and trust me, it always hurts worse. The other choice is to be vulnerable, to shave those calluses, as gross as that sounds, and consider that God may in fact love us wildly. When we assume that God loves us, and that there's nothing that we can do about that, far more becomes possible. Whether we lose all that we are given, or whether we triple it, God loves us anyway. That tends to make us brave. 
So keep your hands and your heart smooth and vulnerable, thick skin, overrated. Dare to believe that God is full of grace, no matter what. When you do good, do it not so that God will love you, but because God already does. One more argument to this point, and then I'm done, because it's cold. Think about it this way. When you're in the presence of someone that you believe to be hostile towards you, how do you act, and how do you feel? You might be defensive, angry, calloused, even mean. You close yourself down in self-protection. It brings out the worst in you. You end up burying and even losing what is good about you, much like the servant who buried the one talent. What about when you're in the presence of someone that you are sure adores you? How do you act? How do you feel? You're funnier, kinder, you're more yourself. You believe in your own goodness and you invest it in good things. And you end up discovering good parts of yourself that you didn't even know existed. Friends, I am certain that God adores you not because you are perfect, but because God is perfect. Not because you are naturally loving, but because God is naturally loving. We do not serve a harsh master. We serve one who created us just to see us love and live and thrive. So shave those calluses before they rip off and dare to believe that, in the words of Chance the Rapper, we believe in God and I know God believes in us. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. God of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your fierce love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us with justice and compassion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of, the, of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Bless this beautiful valley. This is our home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, sound forth your justice. In the ears of all leaders, increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuse. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all in need, search out all who cry in your cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of chronic illness of all kinds with your radiant light. Send us out as a accompaniment and encouragement. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the stranger, stir up the holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. At this time, the members of the congregation are welcome to come forward. Lord, we lift up all the names of the people that are on our prayer list here at church and those that maybe are not on the prayer list that are concerns that we are carrying with us. Watch over us and protect us, Lord, and give us guidance in the days ahead as we 
kind of bring a lot of things back indoors. Hear us, O oh Lord. Your mercy is great. Dear Lord, continue to bless my children, Sarah and Mark, as they are recovering from various surgeries. It's great to see the progress that they each have made. At the same time, please help David Lloyd handle the frustration and the uh, life that he has to live with cancer. Uh, hear us, O oh Lord. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of resurrection, we give you thanks for all of the saints at rest. Inspire us to learn from their example, that saints yet to come may learn from ours, and that they may also know your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until the day when you gather all creation around you, your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. We will share the peace the way that we have for the past several months. Make eye contact above those masks. Stay uh, in front of your seat and uh, make a gesture of peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Everybody. <laughs> you may be seated. Um, I only have uh, two announcements today. The first is that we will be wrapping up our book study um, on Austin Channing Brown's I'm Still Here. Uh, the link for that Zoom meeting is in your email. And so if that's a thing that you've been doing, um, we look forward to seeing the bottom half of your face on Zoom today. Um, that's always nice. Um, and the second thing is uh, your worship committee has been working exceedingly hard, um, making good plans and surge proof plans um, for worship this winter. And so you can expect an announcement about that uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, um, in your email box. We have um, a, a service every week um, that will be uh, online. And then we have some volunteer opportunities for that. And then every other week, do an outdoor communion service for those who are brave enough for the chilliness um and a uh, full announcement about that tomorrow all right and with that let's see i have my stuff together okay please rise as we continue our worship with the great thanksgiving The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth. You created us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. You created us to love you and one another, but we turned away and our love failed. Still, your love remains steadfast and you continue to call us to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Therefore, with the whole host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who calls us to pursue justice with courage. On the night in which he was condemned to die, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When that last supper was over, he took the cup. 
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Eternal God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his love, through Christ, with Christ, and Christ. In the unity of the Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us join in the prayer our Savior gave us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Beloved, the table of bread and wine is now ready. And when you're ready, you'll come forward, um, allowing at least six feet of distance between yourself and those outside your household. Uh, please keep your mask on while you're out of your seat. Uh, you will take both elements back to your seat, and we will partake of them together. Um, when you reach the front of the line, you will find hand sanitizer here on this pedestal. Please sanitize your hands. Receive a small piece of bread and a muffin cup from me so that we don't all have to touch each other's hands. Um, and then move to the wine. Take a cup, being sure to touch only the one that you will be taking. Our altar care folks have carefully arranged those on the tray to make that easy for you. Uh, there'll be as little speaking as possible while we're in close contact to minimize risk. And once you have both elements, Go back to your seat and wait for everyone to be seated, and we will take them together. Um, and you can dispose of your empties um, either uh, in your own home yourself, or there's a garbage can here and a garbage can on the other side of these trees. Um, and so with those preliminaries out of the way, come to this table, you who have great faith, and you who would like to have more. Come, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, you who depend on the sacrament, and you for whom it is still new and strange. But this is the table of Jesus Christ, and his welcome is to us all. Give us just a second to get set up, and then we'll invite you forward.
the love of the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with the food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guide, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for every time and every task, give you peace beyond understanding. And may the blessing of the triune God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be, be with you today and always. Amen. As some of you know, um, we have a wonderful and thriving prayer shawl ministry in this congregation, um, which found its birth in 2020 in an age where we can't just give each other hugs, we have decided to wrap knitting around each other instead, which I think is a wonderful thing. Um, and we have a few of those um, that uh, our prayer shawl makers have made, and we need to bless those together so that they can then be taken out in the community. Um, so if you will extend a single hand and blessing as we are all called to bless, let us pray. Eternal and loving God, may your grace be upon these shawls warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing. May their warmth be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and peace. May these shawls sustain and embrace human bodies in good times and hard times. And may those who wrap them around their shoulders feel your embrace and the embrace of our saviors as a church family. May the one who receives each shawl be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, wrapped in love, and may the hands that lovingly knit these shawls be blessed for they have done your holy work. In the name of the one who embraces us always, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And just a reminder, um, if you know someone who is in special need of a hug from God or a hug from our saviors, uh, these are here for you to take. That is why they are made. So thank you again to the wonderful humans who uh, knit these shawls. Uh, all right, Anya.
Go in freedom, go in Christ. Thanks be to God.